Let's mm, that's drunk. It's always fun to find a person who wasn't around for or never even heard of stuff like Cadillacs and dinosaurs. For one thing, the title alone is just absurd. Not just any old cars, but Cadillacs. Oh, and some dinosaurs too. Sure, why not? The idea stems from a comic started by Mark Schultz, and it was originally titled Xenozoic Tales back in 1986 before it was picked up as a regular series that spanned 14 issues up through 1996. During that time, it was reprinted by Marvel Comics as Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, under which it eventually got its own Saturday morning cartoon, and later its own beat-em-up arcade game made by Capcom in 1993. And yep, this is yet another arcade game that's never received any kind of home port, presumably due to licensing issues. As you can see, this game is pure early 90s beat-em-up action through and through, and it looks and plays like a cross between Final Fight and The Punisher. It even borrows several sound effects from Final Fight, and you might recognize some of the use of weapons from The Punisher. You get everything from pistols to machine guns to shotguns, torches, grenades, TNT, bazookas, even good old fashioned rocks to throw at people. Hey jackass, what are you doing sitting there? Take that! I can't help but laugh at that. There's several things that separate Cadillacs and Dinosaurs from the standard beat-em-up fare, however. You get four characters to choose from, and you can play with up to three players at once. I found Hannah and Mess to be the best characters, Hannah because she's faster and has a bit of a longer reach, and Mess is pretty much just your Hagger-style character, throwing and suplexing enemies left and right. What a badass. Also, this game is legitimately gory. I mean, you see dinosaurs just chomping away at you, or, or some random flunkies. Yeesh. You can also blow people up with a grenade Mortal Kombat style. Gruesome. There's also special moves here and there, like holding down and then pressing up an attack will have you do some kind of flipping attack. There's a total of eight levels here, but if you play this one and work your way through the first couple levels, you might ask yourself, uh, where the heck are the actual Cadillacs and dinosaurs? It's not until level two until you get really into it with some dinosaurs, fighting a bunch of them at once, fending them off with your fists. So ridiculous. And it's not until level three until you're callously mowing down people in a Cadillac. One strange aspect of this game, however, is that you're fighting to protect the dinosaurs, so when you're fighting them and trying to blow them up with bazookas and whatever, you're really just trying to make them snap out of whatever kind of trance they're in, at which point they flash and change color and just kind of wander off. It's a little goofy. What's really cool, though, is that the dinosaurs do not discriminate when it comes to attacking people. They'll go after both you and the enemy, and I really dig that. One flaw I have to point out is that, yes, this is an arcade game through and through, and as such, there are some quarter-munching bosses here whose attacks can be extremely cheap. The difficulty isn't too bad here, although with 8 levels, this is a long game for a beat-em-up, so you might get tired of some of the cheap tactics you'll see here and there, but I definitely wouldn't call it game-breaking or anything. The boss here named Morgan is a small target and can be tough to track down, and he regularly attacks you with a barrage of grenades from off-screen. It's so annoying. But hey, I suppose that's not unusual for an arcade game. One thing this game gets absolutely right is all the usual beat-em-up tropes you've come to expect from games like this, everything from the sheer amount of carnage you can create, similar to Alien vs. Predator, and even the enemies' names are amusing, like there's one boss you fight named Slice, and later on you fight two of them, only they've been genetically modified somehow into these dinosaur-like creatures, so now their names are Slicer? Get it? Eh? There's also the aforementioned Morgan, who eventually turns into a hideous monster himself and is renamed Morg. I don't know why, I just thought that was really funny. All the other flunkies have typical names like Gutter and Thug. Poor guys, just put them out of their misery. There's all sorts of nice little touches here and there. I love the sleeping dinosaur in the back. This guy has to punch it a few times to wake it up. I love the cheesy one-liners your characters say when they defeat a boss. I'm just too cool. Yeah, you are, buddy. Another thing I really like is that when your weapon runs out of ammo, you can just use it as a blunt object to beat the crap out of enemies. I also love when you have to use a continue, you get a villain taunting you for a second, but when you press one player start, you punch this guy right in his face. That's fantastic. You've also got what's clearly a Blanca ripoff here? What's with that? I should also take a quick second to mention that no, this game has nothing to do with the Sega CD game featuring all sorts of full motion video. That's a totally different thing entirely. So yeah, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs from Capcom is exactly what you'd expect with some real nice bonuses thrown in, like the number of different weapons, the dinosaurs that can attack both you and the enemies, all the awesome pixel art and hideous mutated monsters you have to fight, the settings and the music are all great, but unfortunately it's got some flaws that are pretty typical of all arcade beat-em-ups of the time, like cheap AI tactics and repeating bosses. Still, this one is worth playing if you can track it down, and since it's never received any sort of home port whatsoever, you gotta play it any way you can. All right, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.